Welcome to Chief Evangelist. I'm your host, Ethan Butte. I'm on a mission to explore and understand the role of the Chief Evangelist and the movement behind it. How should CEOs be thinking about it? How does it benefit the company? Which companies and markets need evangelism most? What does the work involve? What does success look like? And who's a good fit as a Chief Evangelist? That's what we're exploring at chiefevangelist.com and in conversations like this one. Today, we're learning from the evangelist at Enable, the SaaS platform for B2B rebate management. His background is in finance, accounting, and wealth management, obviously very different from evangelism. We'll talk about some of those differences and what he's learned in his first year in the role. Mark Gillum, welcome to Chief Evangelist. Thank you, um, Ethan, and absolutely very different worlds from evangelizing to wealth management and and the even construction materials. Very, very different worlds. Yeah, I, of course, and we'll get into it. I'm sure there are things that um, that are more similar than we might expect as well. Um, but before we dive into some of the some of what you've learned in that first year, some of the skills that you maybe didn't recognize you had that lent themselves well to evangelism, some that maybe you developed intentionally. We'll start with our standard opener, which is the most important job of an evangelist. What does that conjure for you? The most important job of an evangelist um, is it's about being yourself first and foremost. Um, I always say sort of in the organization at Enable, we've got lots of wonderful salespeople, marketing people, software engineers they but they only have one evangelist and so it's important that you are that person and you shape it and make it um you know it's your role um there is no defined um kind of job description i think for an evangelist so to be a truly effective evangelist you're being yourself you're shaping it how you feel you can add the value to the organization that you, you know you're representing Every organization is going to have a different requirement. And I think we spoke about it when we first met. So it's on, I think the, the most important thing is understanding what is that requirement. Do they, do they need an inward-looking evangelist? Are you an outward-looking? Are you helping the sales process? Are you actually creating brand awareness? Really, what is it that you're evangelizing? So I think... And hopefully that does answer the question. But for me, it, it is about, yes, making it your own. Very good. I, that's something that I've observed. Uh, our guest on episode 14, Bill Sherman, uh, he and I had a conversation after we've had many conversations, but in a recent one, we spent a lot of time talking about exactly what you just observed, which is that so often the role is as unique as the individual blended with when it's done effectively the unique needs of the organization or of the market at that time. Um, so I guess to maybe jump ahead farther than I than I typically do at this moment, talk about what was going on for Enable when uh, I believe they found you or you knew each other. Or I don't remember. So tell that story and it, with and, and lead into what was going on for Enable at the time where they recognized the need to put you in particular as a unique individual human being with your own unique background into this role? Sure. Um, so when I was working um, in construction materials, um, inevitably there's a lot of rebates in, in, in that world. Uh, and so rebate software starts to play a role. And I, so I was a client of Enables um, and really helped them um, in, in their product development um, as a very engaged customer. And Enable resonated really well with the industry we were in. But at that point, they were quite a niche player in a very niche market. As Enable moved um, stateside um, and we were on a journey to expand, that niche um, of people who can deal with these things remained. Um, and what they found was actually to scale, they're going to need somebody on the inside who really understands. And I think one of the key words is who can relate um, to the customers they're speaking to. Because being credible, I think is very, very important in many areas of business. 
Um, and when we talk about rebates, we're talking here about businesses that are entrusting probably in some cases multiples of their profit to a third party um, and a piece of software. And I think inevitably we've probably all had a, a bad experience of a piece of software at some point. So what Enable required was somebody who's not sales, who but recognizes the commercial side. Um, somebody who isn't marketing, but understands brand awareness and you know, creating um, you know, or sending out the right message, as well as somebody who's a bit technical um, and can understand that. And then finally, understands why businesses need or will benefit from the software. If you write all of those requirements on a piece of paper, you're going to struggle to find the person. It's one of those where I think it's more likely that if you happen to come across that person, you're just going to create the role for them. And I think that's really what happened at Enable. I don't think they set out and said, hey, we need an evangelist. They actually, um, there was an opportune moment when I was between roles and they said, hey, we, we, we have these requirements, which was not the full list. But then it was actually the CEO said, well, Mark's available. He's between roles. Could he do it? And they went, you know what? Not only could he do that, but he could do a lot of the other things as well for us. So we had the conversation. It was a very, very, and I, I've heard other people talk about this, as you go into evangelism, you're sat there thinking, what am I letting myself in for? What is, what is this role? You're probably not going to get a job description. Um, and so realistically, it's about having the, I think, having the belief that actually you can genuinely evangelize already. You must, I think, have, have some belief in what they're about. It helps if you already know a couple of the people and a bit of the team and the culture. Uh, and that, having been a former client, I did. Um, so, it, but it's still, it was a real kind of difficult decision to make and a scary one because I was an accountant. I had my career path all set out for me in accountancy. And then this is completely different. I've gone from embracing spreadsheets and using them day in, day out in my role, which all accountants do, to sitting on webinars telling people you shouldn't use spreadsheets because rebate software you know, is, is better for you. Um, and it is true, but it's a completely different world. And like any evangelist, um, and I, I've watched a couple and, and spoke, um, obviously, to a couple of evangelists through your network. There is no perfect skill set, in my opinion, because we're not going to tick when all the boxes. We're not going to all be wonderful public speakers. Um, we're all not all going to be inspiring and that outgoing. The, the key to me is what we all need to be is genuine. That is that's the most important thing. If you portray that, um, and it's not something you can fake, if it's there, then in my opinion, people buy into that. And that, and you evangelize without even realizing you're doing it. That, that for me is real evangelizing. Because at times I found myself thinking, am I really evangelizing? And then people say, Mark, you did it just now. And you're like, did I? Uh, am I evangelizing right now? And, and and that's the thing. So you, to me, you 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 know, you have a bit of fun with it, um, because being an evangelist is, um, in my opinion, you're almost like a, a connector of wisdom. You don't know everything. What you want to do is you build out a network of people who can just make things happen, um, and that's the kind of the journey I, I'm finding myself on now. It, it's really exciting. Other evangelists, it's so refreshing when you speak to them and you realize I'm not the only one who at times is scratching my head thinking, um, you know, is there more structure to this? Um, am I doing the right things? Because to your point early on, your role will change because as an evangelist, you adapt. One day you could be more focused inward. 
the next day could be more outward is wherever the business um, or wherever you feel you can add the most value um, through your skill set. Yes. Yeah, so, so many directions I could go here and so much good work, good words and good wisdom in what you just shared at the risk of going too far for myself and for listeners. Give us a little bit of color on rebate software. When you say rebate, I'm not quite sure exactly what that means in the context of B2B software. Sure. So rebates typically exist um, in all walks of commercial life, um, and they get called lots of different things. So in my, to my, my, in my mind, air miles are a form of a rebate. Anything where you buy something and you get something back at a later point technically is a form of a rebate. Where our software comes in is in business-to-business trading, where they'll typically incentivize each other. So if you buy more of this product, it will get cheaper as you buy it. So you'll have targets in the year, that, and if you achieve them, you get a great big payment at the end of the year. There are literally billions exchanging hands in these kind of behind-the-scenes arrangements. What our software does is it allows those two businesses to transact through their normal systems, but have this trusted third-party ledger, which is saying this is how much is actually being earned in the rebate in the background. Because one of the things that you never, ever want to get into a position is at the end of the year, you have different numbers, which happens all too often. Um, And so if you are... On the, if you're receiving the rebate, you want to make sure you're collecting absolutely everything you're due. And if you're paying out a rebate, you want to make sure that you're you're only paying out what is due. Um, and from experience, and I, I've had it firsthand, without a system, you can get it right, but errors will happen. And it only takes a fraction of a, a percentage difference and it can mean big, big money. Uh, in, my, in my last role, we were collecting £200 million in rebate for a business that made £50 million in profit. Wow. So it was it was crazy because they trade into this rebate just to be able to, you know, um, to, to exist. So I've seen firsthand the importance of getting those numbers right, um, but also how... A really, really big part of what I now do is help businesses set the right rebates. Because for me, a rebate should coexist in both parties for mutual benefit. Too often I hear one side is saying, well, I wish I didn't have to pay out this rebate. And I'm thinking, well, you've got the wrong rebate program then. Because you should be wanting to pay that out because in return, you should be getting something back from your customer um, such as you know more growth or more more um, market penetration of a particular product. So there's so many different ways you can use a rebate. They they should be treated like incentives. Um, and I think on a final point, if I'm speaking at a conference, one of the questions I'll generally ask is, how did we choose what airline we flew with? There's a very good chance it was because of a reward scheme. That shows you the power of rebates. Airlines don't mind giving you those miles and you don't mind taking them. It's a win-win. And that for me is what a good rebate scheme should be generally in any kind of um, arrangement. Very good. So I heard you say twice in that last pass, I have firsthand experience. This goes to the genuine, it goes to the credible, it goes Mm -hmm. to the relatable. I've been in your chair. Um, I now have a much clearer understanding of what the word rebate means in this context. That was also helpful. And I totally get it. So I also heard um, that there's been some variability in in the orientation of your focus, your speaking, I just heard. uh, And I already knew, but I just want to reinforce that. Uh, You have direct customer contact. And so you're doing some level of consultancy or evaluation directly with customers. What was the initial role? And you mentioned that there, there was a, they had a little bit of it sketched out when they invited you in and, and you took this career risk, which I would also like to ask you about. But specifically, what I'd like to kind of 
tie together here a little bit is, you know, what did the role look like about a year ago? What is the role looking like today, just from a pure functional standpoint? So you mentioned again, speaking, you have direct customer contact, you mentioned some internal communication. What were they looking for out of the gate and what is it shaped out to be? Out of the gate, what they were very much looking for was somebody who has been there, um, who can help with a sales journey, who can bring people the comfort that actually I, I've been there, I've been in your shoes, um, I've adopted the software, I've seen firsthand the results um, of adopting the software, the benefits it can bring. But then the to the genuine point, adopting the software isn't going to solve all of your problems. There's other things you are going to probably need to do to maximize the value you're going to get from this. And that's where Enable kind of stops in what they could offer and where I can take over. And so I'm regularly brought in. And and in fairness, the sales team generally don't even sit in on the call because they don't want it to be salesy. They they say, we're going to bring Mark in. He's just going to just talk to you. Um, And it's, it's great because you... Um, you hear stories and you, you know, you feel like you're adding value, but also they're, they're adding just as much value back because you're always learning as an evangelist. And so that was one side of it. The other side was really helping um, enable wanted to be more than just software. They recognized that actually there's a space here, not only to provide software, but to actually provide a support network. Because to your point, a lot of people sit there and they think, well, what is a rebate? And for many accountants, you could, you'll could you take a job. You'll, the first day, they'll say, okay, Mark, you, um, you're you going to be responsible for rebates. And you think, I'm going to be responsible for what? Um, and what we recognize is, well, actually, we can help you here. Yes, the software is great. But actually, we can help you even without the software. And hopefully in doing so, you'll have a look at the software as well. Um, so... I really help in that arena and also just educating our marketing team. Um, I do I, I do spend probably a lot of time doing that as opposed to our overall sales team, but I do do a lot of kind of internal education um, because these kind of structures, they can get very complicated. Um, and also there's a lot of terminology out there that I even still to this day, somebody will be speaking and I'll be thinking, I'm going to need to ask some questions here because I have no idea what is actually being discussed because every industry tends to use different terminology. Businesses within themselves then use, take variations on it. So it's really having that confidence to say, I'm an expert in this arena, but it doesn't mean I can speak every language. Um, And so those were the first two areas. What I did was as I came in, I think that, you know, the first couple of months were very much kind of, shuffling around the business nudging and working out where where am i most needed because i did recognize they recruited me almost because there was that opportune moment so they probably didn't have their ducks in a row in terms of right we're going to have an evangelist so i i had to find that 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 sweet spot where i am helping people my messaging is consistent with everything else and if not, is it my messaging that needs to change? Or actually, do I need to influence the messaging within the business? And it was really getting to know the key people in the business. I was educating them on rebates, but I was also educating them on evangelism. Because that for me was really important. So many people, even internally, will say, Mark, I don't know what your role does. I don't, I don't know what. I should ask or how you can help me. And so there was a really big part of that because to our earlier points, I can do whatever I want with the role. So I can decide what help I want to give them and where I feel actually um, maybe I, you know, it'd be inappropriate because I just wouldn't have all the time in the world to, to, to help with the, you know, certain things. So that was kind of, yeah, very much how it started out. It was a couple of key areas Um, and it's shaped a bit, it's largely stayed that way, but there has been other things that have evolved and grown. What was success defined as out of the gate? First of all, I I really appreciate this idea of 
they identified a need and an opportune moment in this idea that we need to educate people. Uh, and it's not necessarily the CEO or any of the other people that were involved in the decision. Um, it's you on the front lines. And the challenge that you've already discussed too, is that you're figuring it out a little bit as they're figuring it out. It's like, I think I could help you in these ways. And then you try it. And then you're like, I can help your team in these ways because I've done it. Um, what were so, what, what, were some early signs of success that you discussed? And then another kind of practical matter, like how, where do you report? How do you report? And how accountable are you for your activities and outcomes uh, if if there's any accounting of that at all? It sounds, because my impression is that there's a high degree of trust. There was some shared vision with an executive leadership that this is going to be a useful role. Uh, let's just do it and trust Mark stay in communication with Mark and then we'll check in every once in a while. But like, how close is that to reality? Like tie those things it, together. Uh, it, it's really interesting. And I, I, I've spoke to a few people who have taken evangelist roles. And I think there's very much two types of evangelist. There is the evangelist who almost grew up with the business. And then there is the recruited evangelist. I'm the, I'm the latter. And I think the recruited evangelist, generally businesses almost have to justify the, your, your, your cost um, and the value you're bringing. So they want to create targets. They want to create measures, which whenever you read, how do you put an evangelist in your business? It's one of the first things to say, don't do it because it's just, you, you know, you're, you're, it's so hard to measure. But when it started, I was measured on the, the, the success of the marketing team. So very much um, how, how, how well are we performing as a team? Um, it was very, and, and also what am I doing in, um, so there was a couple of specific pieces. Um, so am I providing quality content that can be used for marketing purposes as well? Um, so webinars, though, that those kind of things. As time has gone on, it's been uh, less and less about that. And it's been more about, okay, Mark, we're now confident with the value that we're getting. And so it's more just of a holistic, if the business is doing well, everybody's doing well, um, which is which is a great place to be. Albeit, I think there's always going to be that question. And I ask it more than, than probably anybody else, especially with my accounting background. You always want to measure things. And so how do you know at the end of the day, I had a good day? I find that I do find that personally challenging because in accounting, I produced that report. It was on time. It was accurate. I did my job. What, what does that look like in evangelizing? Um, and it's even things like, so in accounting, you're either right or you're wrong. If I speak on a stage as an evangelist, there'll be varying degrees of how well I presented and how successful it was. It's not right or wrong, or hopefully it's not. Um, how do you measure that? How, how do you say, well, actually, that was at the standard I, re I expected myself versus it wasn't? And so you, you have to learn to be able to, I think, let go a little bit, give yourself a bit of a break, and actually just trust. I was put into this role not because of how what I've said I'm capable of, I was put into this role because this business trusts me. So just continue to be yourself. Be, you know, be that genuine person. Keep doing the things that you feel you can add the most value with. Um, regularly, I touch base with um, you know, our executive just to make sure that I'm not missing anything. Are they happy with, you know, with what, what's happening? Um, and to your point, yeah, everybody's working it out as we go. Um, and so it, it's been a very, very interesting transition. Yeah, I'll bet. Um, so let's get into that. And I want to start with the risk piece. You said, you know, this, this is a risk, you know, <laughs> and, and I'll even um, offer a microcosm or a parallel to that, which is that in accounting, there's typically one right answer. 
That seems mm-hmm. very safe, uh, assuming that you're pretty good at it and you can get to the right number most of the time. Sure. This other one's a lot messier. It's less clear. It is trust-based as opposed to obvious layup, um, outcome-based in a lot of different ways. And so there's, so when I'm thinking about the risk for you, and so, but, and then I'll give it back to you to, to either plus that up or recharacterize it and then also expand on it because I think this might bridge into our conversation about what skills actually were a benefit and which ones did you really need to focus on and develop. But, um, you know, this risk as goes the business, so goes evangelism is actually pretty risky because you don't have any direct control over any of these outcomes. All you can do is kind of influence and participate. Um, This is a step away from a continued trajectory within a defined field. What else was risky about it to you and or speak to either of those risks? Yeah, sure. I think um, being completely honest, the, the, the biggest risk for me initially was probably failure. Um, I think it's one of the things that scares us the most because my career was going very well in finance. I mean, my, my last role before joining Enable, I'd made it to chief financial officer. Everything was going very well. Um, and then I've just kind of completely taken a different role that requires a completely different skill set or what I thought to start with. Um, And so there was almost this, you know, imposter syndrome type feeling of, should I be here? Because whenever somebody says the word evangelist, the first thing that pops up is somebody like Guy Kawasaki and, you know, on a stage with thousands of people watching everybody in awe and you're thinking, me right now and that you know that they're two very different worlds i i'm an accountant um we, we can be funny as accountants and we um you know we can be likable characters um it's just we have to deliver tough messages quite often but there are yeah the, the skill set doesn't naturally lend itself to it so there was there was definitely that risk side and that 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 fear of failure um the other things though that were going through my head were you, know, you kind of live once. You know, I'm I'm doing well in accountancy. That's not going to disappear. I can go back to being an accountant whenever I want. But hopefully, one of two things will happen. I will do this and I will really enjoy it. And I will look back and think this was a great decision. Um, or I will do this, I will learn an incredible amount. I will you know, kind of enhance my skill sets. I will be a, and I will actually be a better accountant for it as well. Because some of the skill sets I'm learning really do help with accountancy. Because everybody thinks of accountancy as crunching numbers. That is actually a minute part of an accountant's role these days. Most of the time, it's trying to influence decision making based on the numbers you're seeing. So it's a very people orientated role these days. So an evangelism to me is 100% a people role. So it, it really, really you know, is helping. Um, I'm pleased, you know, I'll say please, I'm thrilled. I, t- I took the decision to do it because it's, yeah, it's been an incredible journey so far. It's, um, I still get to do a bit of my accountancy work. I'm, when I'm in that almost that consultancy mode, you're still working with people. I'm working with CEOs, commercial directors, you know, VPs, uh, you know, lots of different and, and in lots of different industries as well, which makes it really interesting because people love to tell you their story. Um, so whether I'm learning about fertilizers in agriculture um rebates exist there by the way big ones um software and um, computer software there's all you know in, in, in the whole tech space they exist pharmaceuticals um you're learning so much all the time and, and and in the process you're meeting lots of you know amazing people who you know will share their story um and i also connect those people so I, I'm I'm never scared to say actually I haven't got the answer to that, but I think I know somebody who does. Yeah, so many good highlights in there. It's one of the things I always appreciated about 
content marketing in general is that to do it in a credible way in a space that you don't know super well, or, you know, in my case at BombBomb in the early days, there was nothing published on video email and video messaging. It, frankly, it just didn't exist. Uh, so that process of creating content that is uh, credible and useful, you do a lot of learning, but I agree with you, like the, expanding it to evangelism more broadly brings in much more of a human element and learning through conversation. And then it's just a matter of which stories can I weave together? Who do I need to connect and all of these other things in order to produce better content and more relationships, a stronger network, a greater sense of community around the brand, around the product, around the concept. Um, so much good stuff there. I appreciate that relationship piece. What were a couple of skills where, um, you know, and thank you for sharing your your fear of failure. I think everyone can identify with that in evangelism and beyond um, this, the, you know, the imposter syndrome. People talk about that quite a bit in a variety of contexts. Once you got through that a little bit, um, what were some of the skills where you said, okay, I can do this. I do have my feet under me. I didn't make a horrible decision in this career transition. There's a lot of potential here. What were a couple of things that you identified and said, you know what, I'm going to be intentional about getting better at this, or I'm going to be intentional about doing this thing a little bit more often, because if I did it more often, I would be, you know, better or more confident or more effective or whatever. What were a couple of things you decided you needed to work on or build? From my perspective, it was being able to distinguish between conversational presenting and being kind of very deliberate, very um, you know on point. Um, less is more. Um, anybody who knows me will say, "Yeah, Mark can talk." Um, so I had to learn, and my wife keeps telling me, "Mark, you know that that whole thing. You have two ears and one mouth. Use them in that proportion." Um, so it was about being able to deliver the message deliver it clearly um, and do it efficiently because there's lots of places you need to be. Um, and so it, learning that, I had to learn all about marketing. I used to think of marketing as advertising, billboards. I was like, that's marketing. Oh, I was wrong. Um, it's you know, the, So I, I sit within our marketing function uh, and I work really, really closely with them. And I've learned all about content marketing, product marketing, demand generation. Um, the difference as well between what I would deem as PR type marketing, um, the, there's so many different areas and then they all have their own expertise within these areas. Um, and on, my, on one of my very first meetings with them, I said, guys, I'm, I'm gonna be honest here. I don't quite get all of this, I'm a finance person. From my perspective, what you do is a lot of stuff. And they all looked at me and I went, that's how I'm badging it right now. Hopefully, you know, it will change. But And I will deliver stuff for you as well. And we will make, you know, magic happen with this stuff. But, you know, they've been brilliant because I've recognized I've had to learn. Um, but being an accountant generally, or a good accountant in my mind, is quite, is quite an inquisitive skill set. You don't just take the number and accept it. You want to understand what drove that number. That was That's what makes a really good accountant. Somebody who can take the past and influence the future with it. Um, and so I've, I've spent lots of time learning and learning. Even software. This is the first time I've worked in a software business. So I spend time with our product and development team understanding well, what really goes into making a piece of software and why is it not the case that I can't speak to somebody who says this is a great idea and I come along and say we should have that in our product and you'll just see them roll their eyes and go thanks Mark yeah thank you for that um, and so it's been it's been able to find how do you um, take all of this information from all of these different places deploy it back out without it just being kind of that that, that verbal blur everywhere. Um, so that for me has been one piece. And then really, really focusing on that, be yourself. Um, I, I, I had um, a few lessons on how to present. And the one thing that really echoed through it was, Mark, you know your subject. When you start talking about it, you can see you're passionate about it. But the first few minutes, 
when you're warming up is where you need to work. They said, so we need to get you out of the blocks. Uh, and it was really interesting. The piece of advice I was given was watch a comedian. The first five minutes of their gig, they're reading the audience, they're warming them up and, and they're relating. So that's normally when they'll turn around and talk about the town they're in and things like that. They're getting the, the, the reading the room, getting the, you know, the audience on board. So that's what you, you, know, you need to be able to do. Once you're through that first couple of minutes, you will just flow. Um, and so it's been really helpful having kind of the, the, those learning experiences. Um, and I'm sure, um, you know, the, the, there's a lot from the accountancy background um, that is helping as well with my journey. Very good. Talk about the sales process. You, you mentioned that you've gotten involved in the sales process. What was your exposure to that in the past? I'm sure, you know, uh, that felt a little bit different to you in accountancy um, because there's a lot of top line there versus what is this miscellaneous expense? Like, you know, mid, mid process here that is that worth it? Um, talk about your exposure to sales and maybe what you've learned in that space a little bit and, um, and how you've grown in relationships and understanding there. Quite fortunate in that before I worked as an accountant. So I start when I was at university, I started out in a, a call center. And anybody who's worked in a call center will know you've probably got sales targets. Um, and um, it's kind of how I started my career in banking because it was actually at a bank's call center. So I had quite a bit of training in, in sales, which set me up really well in the accountancy world. Because to my earlier point, accountancy is a lot of trying to influence people. Isn't that what sales is about as well? So. You know, one of the biggest things I took away from my sales training when I was young was people don't like to be sold to. Um, so you've got to identify the need um, and, you know, um, and, and sell to the need rather than just saying you need travel insurance or something like that. Um, and I was always very much the relationship seller. Not I, I couldn't do the, the kind of the, the hard sell i um some people were just natural at it I, I i wasn't i always had to labor and work hard to try and hit my sales targets whereas other people it you know that it just came naturally to them hence i went into accountancy um but in the where i'm at now it is very much that that world of using some of those skills so understanding um when I'm speaking to a, a client or a prospect, understand what do they need rather than forcing on them what I want to give them. It, it's using that. How can I help you? Why are we here today? What, um, and only well, once you've got through that, that, that process and you understand what they need, do you then kind of impart maybe what you need? But the great thing about evangelism in my mind is I actually don't need anything. So it's the, it's my sales team who need something now, and I I think you almost have to create that 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 Chinese wall in your brain. Yes, we need the sale as a business, but I don't have sales targets. I don't personally need that sale. We have lots of salespeople in this business. The reason this customer is speaking to me isn't because I'm a salesperson. So for me, recognizing that, being able to you know, not be naive, but also not let it affect how you're going to conduct yourself. And again, I think that comes back to that trust we've talked about and the business recognizing Mark, when he's speaking to a prospect, is going to say different things to what our sales team are going to say. And sometimes that is tough, especially for your sales leadership. You know, at times I think, guys, you put, you know, put your earmuffs on, you know, because I'm going to answer this question. But I think it adds so much credibility to a sales process. Um, I don't ever become involved in kind of the commercials. I, I very rarely, to be honest, talk about our product. Um, because, again, we've got people who can do that. What I talk to is the why the and, and, and actually how you can elevate our products to do so much more. 
Uh, and in some cases, how you can elevate without our product. Because to my mind, I'm not expecting anything from this conversation. I can offer everything. Um, and that for me, hopefully leaves a lasting memory in that, you know, for the, for the other party. So that even if you don't make the sale, you've left the lasting impression so that potentially a door may open in the future. So much good stuff in there, specifically this idea of not needing anything in that moment and what that opens up uh, in terms of potential inside that conversation. You essentially described yourself as a a uh, business consultant at some level, like what's going on in your business? What do you actually need? Are you clear on your needs? Let's talk about that. I don't think you understand it the same way as I've learned to understand it by talking with 15 of your peers over the last 12 weeks, you know, kind of a thing. It's just super powerful. Um, I know because this is how we connected that when you found yourself uh, in this role or perhaps even considering it, uh, I'm sure you've been doing you know, you know, reaching out and engaging with folks like me, probably even in the decision making period of whether or not to make this career leap. Um, as you're talking about the evangelist role with other people, whether they're leaders considering implementing it or whether they're other people uh, new to the role or considering going into that type of a role, what are some of the, you know, guidelines that you would offer or questions you would ask them to help shape their thinking about whether or not it's the right opportunity for them as individuals or for a particular company or even for a particular market? Like, what have you learned through these conversations with other people and through your own experience that you would share with others considering taking on or implementing the evangelist role? I think first and foremost, it this is not about writing a list and saying, these are my requirements. I think it is more about the person than the role. Um, and I think it's really important that, you know, th th for me, this is not a, I think in most jobs, it's somebody for hire. This is not somebody for hire. Um, this is somebody who, yes, they're going to want to get paid, but they're, they're, there's, there's a higher cause here. That they should, um, and then the other thing, trust, absolutely paramount, because if you don't have the trust, you're going to start layering up all the expectations. And what you're then doing is you're influencing their behavior. You do not want to influence the behavior of an evangelist. You want to allow them to evangelize. So if you get the right person, not your list, just the right person. Um, and don't force the person as in, don't think, well, actually, they, they'll do that. That's not what evangelism is about. This is about when that person comes across your path, you take them and you, you, you know, you, you, you kind of level set on this, this is what we're about. This is what we want to achieve. And if they buy into that, then you've got everything you need, in my opinion. So it's very different to recruiting a sales director. Give the, take a sales director. Product's probably not important. Just give them a sales target. They are, you know, they're a gun for hire kind of thing. They will, they will be focused on that objective you've given them. Whereas to me, an evangelist is more of a holistic objective of actually what, and, and that to me is the really, really key bit. What do you want them to evangelize? If because you need to be clear on that because that will define the person. Uh, and I think, you know, and, and, and in my role as an example, so I evangelize best practices when it comes to rebate management. One of those best practices is using rebate software. And I'm the first to say to anybody, we have competitors. We all, you know, and, and actually, the, you know, some competitors have slightly different strengths, slightly different weaknesses. I'm not there to say our software is the best because I wouldn't be genuine if I said that. What I will say is our software does a great job. Some of our competitors' software does a great job. Be very, very careful on what you buy and understand what you're buying to make sure it fits your business because not, yeah, not everything's the right fit. And I will help people to get to that place. Um, and 
that for me is uh, yeah so almost a, a best practice evangelist um and i think once you have that clear the person then can actually express themselves and get into it if you're not clear on that i think you're going to find somebody who actually is probably going around internally trying to work out what they're doing um probably for way too long um so yeah i think being clear trust is paramount um and the person um it, it it's not a a tick box exercise being an evangelist um somebody either just naturally falls into that in terms of not because of the skills they've got but because of, because of who they are and their association with your cause spoken by the way i just want to reinforce again for people listening a former chief financial officer it's it's mm-hmm. just so good this idea of let these people be who they are they're genuine they're credible they're consulting people they're consulting people in an honest way even if we don't get the sale immediately we've left enough impression and provide enough guidance one thing i've observed in my own experience is that when you give in the ways that you have described to your mark um there's an, a degree of reciprocity. So if we aren't the right solution for that person, you wind up getting an introduction to one or two other people that you probably are a good fit for because they're so appreciative of what you've done for them, the time you gave them, the attention you gave them, the thought and care that you brought to the engagement, the conversation, whatever it may be, that they want to reciprocate. You're like, sorry, I didn't give you that business, but I do want to give you something. So here's some stuff. Really, really good. Uh, Mark, we need to wind this down. And the way I love to wind this down is by asking you for something that you find yourself evangelizing in your own personal life that perhaps someone close to you has uh, accused you of evangelizing, maybe. I would say, uh, before you'd even finished the question, I was uh, I was honed in. Um, it's I, I, I'm one of these terrible people. We, we have rescue dogs. So for me... Providing animals with good homes is something for me that if you get me on the street, wherever dogs are going to come up and I'm going to talk about how it's so important to give these animals a good home. Um, And I find myself evangelizing so often best practices with looking after your pets. Um, My wife's a dog trainer, um, but so she's the dog trainer. I'm the evangelist of dog, good dog training. So regularly that I get told, Mark, you're not the expert. Just leave it to me. I'm the expert. But um, I can't help, um, you know, picking up and saying, actually, what, what she says is so powerful because she's all about that force free training and the, uh, um, you know, doing the right things with your animals. And I just are bought into that so much. So if, you ever start talking rescue animals, especially dogs, as we heard them earlier, um, I won't shut up. I I really, really enjoy talking about that and the the kind of the the difference and the joy it can bring. That's wonderful. You are a very distinct type of power couple. I love that story so much. (laughs) Uh, For people who have stuck with us here, Mark, to the end of our conversation, they may want to connect with you. Uh, where mm-hmm. would you send people if they wanted to learn more about you, connect with you, learn about Enable or anything else that we covered here? Um, so I'm available on LinkedIn. Um, there are there are not many Mark Gillums in the world. There's a couple. There's one in a rock band. I'm not him. Um, so I will come up quite quickly there. You can also um, go to, um, we have a rebate strategist community. Um, I think if you just Google rebate strategist community, you will find it um i'm regularly active on there um and um i suppose likewise um if anybody can't locate me through any of those mediums i'm I'm sure ethan they can reach out to yourself and you'll point them in my direction if anybody really wants to talk rebates or rescue dogs awesome i will uh we write all of these up um in your podcast player youtube.com slash at chief evangelist 
you can meet Mark that way. And then when you see his profile picture, you know, you have the right one. So there are only a few. <laughs> I don't know. There, I know of only, only one other Ethan Butte, uh, last name B-E-U-T-E on LinkedIn. Um, I'm the one with glasses standing outside. Uh, the other one has like, I think an animated image that's not one of these new AI style ones where it's, it looks like a photo, but it's kind of animated. It's just a straight yeah. uh, illustrated image. So uh, he is Mark Gillum. I am Ethan Butte. I appreciate you listening. And Mark, I appreciate so much, uh, A, your dedication to rescue dogs and B, your sharing your time and your experience uh, to date. And I look forward to our next conversation. That wraps up this episode of Chief Evangelist. Thank you for joining us. And thanks to Ringmaster Conversational Marketing for helping bring these episodes to you. With any thoughts or questions about the Chief Evangelist role, message me on LinkedIn. I'm Ethan Butte, E-T-H-A-N-B-E-U-T-E. For show notes and more of these conversations, visit chiefevangelist.com.